Hi there, welcome back to the studio and to a busy drawing desk today. Right, let's get this desk organised then I can show you what I'm thinking of doing. quite a while now of doing another lino cut. I've got some fresh lino, well it's fairly fresh, and I'm just concerned that if I put it off for too long it's going to start to dry up and get difficult to cut. So, um, here's one I did earlier, much earlier, quite a long time ago in fact, and uh, there we go, you can see them side by side. Block lino cut block and the print which is in the front of this sketchbook. See this is a, uh, the print on the back of the block that I've stuck on there as well to show me which way around it prints. Just useful if you're doing a repeating pattern. This is another piece of cork lino which has hessian backing which makes it really easy to stick down to either to a, to a board to stop it being uh, curved like that or to stick a print of the, uh, the cut on the back. Quite a useful tip that. Oh, my new cut is going to be from this piece of work, which is uh, something I did in Wax Resist, um, where all the these coloured areas were done with wax crayon, and the red is red ink which was put over the wax crayon, allowed to dry, and then the ink scratched off the surface of the, the wax where it had slightly stuck. So it's a kind of homemade scraper board, really, rather than wax resist, strictly speaking. So what I did was um, traced it off and photocopied it. So here's my photocopy of the reversed image. OK, so because we're thinking in lino, we to think in reverse. So I reversed the image, well, traced it, turned over the tracing paper, photocopied that, and then in order to square it up onto this lino, or to transfer it onto this lino, I identified where the outside edges of the design came. That's my first job. So I found all the furthest right and left points and top and bottom points and marked those out. In fact I cut it, my, the, the piece I'm working from actually I cut out. So that was the second stage and this is the third stage where um, this, is my, this is my working squared up copy which it's all Fold it down so I can concentrate on one little section at a time. Yeah, there's the section transferred down, and I decided I needed to subdivide that rectangle as well to identify accurately where that section of the leaf falls. Let's look at another section, maybe one that's a bit simpler. Well, the one next door, <laughs> that's hardly got anything in it, so that doesn't need any more subdividing. And I just need to come in from where this line left this rectangle and then identify where it crosses over the diagonal and where it leaves. So that's a really easy one to do, the rest of it is empty. Now, next one down, I suppose I could just draw that with just a diagonal line through it, but it's going to be easier if I subdivide that as well. You can refer to the previous video on dividing up to work out how I did all this gridding. But also, here's a little recap. It 
diagonal corner to corner identifies where the centre is. So I can measure that, put a mark of the same measurement at the top and the bottom as well, just to be very accurate. Join all those up. Do the same to the middle this way. Join those up. And then, if I go corner to corner across these, I don't need to actually take any more measurements because I've now got two points that I can enjoy. So in order to get parallel lines of course you always need two measured points so that's these have measured themselves by being two identical diagonals. Neat that isn't it? Well I like it. You go on doing this as many times as you want and grid something up really small if you want a very detailed and precise grid. So you can see every time you get a rectangle, let's do these ones, each rectangle of course is also exactly the same proportion as the larger rectangle. This is the kind of maths I like. Okay, so I can subdivide each of these. See, if I wanted to do, I could keep subdividing them all, joining up the horizontals, joining up the verticals, and I could end up with a tiny little grid. So really, really easy, number three technique. Okay, so in this in this case, it was to I identified the middle. Um, by putting a, a diagonal cross through and then took that measurement, marked it out again there to draw my first horizontal and then subdivided each of those rectangles, this one, this one, this one and this one. So that's the, that's the basic dividing up you end up with with a crisscross like that and then each each individual one you can you can subdivide even more if you need to you can see can you see here on this one that's been subdivided um, that would have had that line going through but I've put another line here and another horizontal this way because this is the most complex area need a lot of help in that section to uh, to decide where all the lines come that's going to take some focus and concentration all right so now that having drawn that additional line through this rectangle of course I need to do the same on my lino now the handy thing is my lino is slightly larger than the design so all I have to do is um, follow where the lines work uh, in the divisions and uh, I'll get a slight enlargement without even really having to think too hard about it. I'm using an HB pencil today, finding that a harder pencil is easier to erase the marks. So um, what I've done over here is I've having drawn it all out with pencil 
I've started to ink up with this uh, it's a carbon ink pen a really lovely drawing pen I'm in love with it um, and it's a permanent ink it's like it's a fountain pen but it's so beautifully designed it doesn't lock up with permanent ink I don't know what the magic is anyway I it goes well on the lino I've been inking up the the lines and then I've left it for quite a long time oh, um, hours to make sure it's dry and then when I erase using the hard eraser with the HB pencil on the lino it's it's erasing really well um, anyway as long as the ink is really really dry it doesn't smudge you would find that if you tried to erase that even though you know you might come to it in 20 minutes and think it's touch dry it would actually smudge if you tried to rub it out which is a little bit annoying so um that explains that practical application of gridding to transfer a design onto lino and uh, i think i'll leave it there for today no more explanation needed um, from the feedback i've had already i'm finding that you are uh, finding this a really good mental challenge which is good for us keep the brain cells active um, it's not everybody's cup of tea i realize that and it's not something that you want to do all the time or even habitually but it really does have its uses and um, i hope you find it useful <laughs> okay see you again <laughs>